In this video, I'll show you how to find the Wi-Fi password of your Epson EcoTank ET2400 printer to connect directly to your smartphone without having to rely on any other Wi-Fi network around. So the connection is direct, but you'll need a Wi-Fi password that I'll show you how to get. If you need two fingers, you're going to press the I button and the Wi-Fi button both at the same time until these lights on the left side starts flashing. So let's do it together. Pressing both buttons, I'm not releasing them. Okay, start flashing, I can release them. Now wait a few seconds, these lights are going this way, one to another. At the point they will stop doing this, like now, and uh, this one will stay lighted. Good, you have now turned on the Wi-Fi Direct of your Epson printer. Now we need to know the Wi-Fi password of this printer. So how to do this? First, we need to insert some paper inside of the paper tray in the back of the printer. Then extend the front paper tray because the printer will print the Wi-Fi password. Then we need to hold this button over here, the I button, until you hear the printer starting to print the Wi-Fi password. So let's do it together. I'm holding it. Usually it takes a few seconds. Okay, the printer starts printing. I can remove my finger. Okay, so the printer finished printing. It's three pages, but honestly, we just need the first one. So on the first page, we need to go down until you see the Wi-Fi Direct section. Here we're going to have the Wi-Fi Direct name of the printer, which is over here under SSID. Mine is Direct D2 Epson 82 C9 FB. And the password will be printed right under it. In my case, it's the 82982063. So keep this uh, paper around, go on your device, iPhone, Android, and download the Epson Smart Panel app from the App Store or the Google Play Store. Do not open it yet. On your phone, or maybe you're doing it with a computer, that's not important, you need to open the Wi-Fi settings. And from here, you need to find your Epson printer in the Wi-Fi network. In my case, just like I just said previously, it's the Direct D2 Epson 82C9FB. Yours will be different, probably. If your printer disappears from the list, just turn your Wi-Fi off and back on again. It should reappear. So I clicked on it, and now I need to type the password we saw previously. It's mostly numbers only. Then press Join. Okay, it has now connected. Now go ahead and launch the app we downloaded previously, the Epson Smart Panel app. In my case, I have already used the app in the past, so if you have another Epson printer connected to this app, you need to press the plus sign on the top right corner. If, this, if it's the first time uh, using this app, you don't need to do this because the first screen will search for your printer directly. Then over here, you're going to press on connect to a product already on Wi-Fi. And you should find your Epson printer. Here we go, we have a green check mark, press OK. You're using the last firmware, perfect. And now you'll be able to use your Epson printer directly with your smartphone. Now let me show you how to print and also how to scan using the app. So to print, very easy, I mean, you have this big button here say print, then you have to choose if it's a picture or a document you wanna print. Now this will open and you need to find a document you want to print on your smartphone. If like in my case, you do not have the file on your smartphone, you can always connect a flash drive to it and find it this way. So let's say I want to print this document. 
Once you're on this page, before pressing the print button, click on the top right corner where you see letter size paper. And here you'll be able to edit many different options, not only the paper size. So uh, at first here, do not touch anything, paper size, make sure this is the right size of paper. Then under media type, make sure this is the type of paper you're going to use. This is very important, especially if you're going to use this uh, printer to print pictures on glossy paper. If you do not select glossy paper from here and you're printing on glossy paper, while well, you're going to have a mess, the ink will smear. In my case, this is plain paper, so I'll so I'll leave it this way. Layout, you can leave it the way it is. Print quality, this is another important thing. You have the choice between standard and high. If you're just printing text or maybe a document with some graphics, like the one I will print in just a few seconds, I think standard is pretty fine. But if you're printing pictures, choose high. It's always better to have the best quality, especially when it counts. Paper source, leave it to automatic and color. While well, this is just in case you want to print in black and white, you can select here black and white and color. I'll leave it to color. Then you can select the number of copies you want. Before pressing start, make sure your printer has some paper um, loaded in the back and extend this paper tray as well before doing that. And now I'll press start. And here we go, we have the print that looks exactly like the one that is on my smartphone screen. Now let me show you how to scan. The scanner is located on the top here, you just need to lift this lid, take the document you want to scan and you're going to place it facing down and you see there is an arrow over here. You need to glide the corner of your paper towards that arrow until it touches it like this, okay? So the paper is aligned with the arrow. Then close the lid. And by the way, if you want to make a copy, you just need to put paper there and select over here if you want the copy to be in color or in black and white. If you simply want to scan it on your phone, gonna press the green scan button on the main menu of the app. And here are some options. Under document size, make sure this is the right size uh, of a document, the one that you have input on the scanner. Image type, select if you want a scan to be in color. Resolution here, press on it. If you're scanning pictures or maybe a document like an artwork or a graphic that has a lot of details, I suggest you select the highest, which is 600 dpi. This will take more time to scan, but it will give you the best details. If you're simply scanning text or just a document like the one I just put there, which is text mixed with some graphics, well, you can leave it to 200 dpi. This is plenty enough for this kind of situation. Then you have remove background. In our case, it's not important, but if you had a picture, let's say, with a lot of white background around and you want to isolate the, the picture, you can select remove background. Automatic rotation, it's up to you to keep it on and off. It's not important since we can rotate the scan afterwards. Finally, you have image format. So if you're scanning text, choose PDF. If you're scanning pictures, choose JPEG. TIFF is not widely used. Finally, press the green button here when you're ready. And here we have the scan. Once you get this preview, you can delete it if you're not happy with the results. You can also zoom in to see if there's enough detail for you. If you find that it's not enough, you just have to choose a higher DPI number the way I showed you previously. You can also crop it if you just want a portion of this page to be saved. And you can also rotate it by pressing this button over here. Finally, if you're scanning a document, let's say with 10 pages or 20 pages or even 50 pages, and you want to combine them in one single document, one single PDF, you just need to press the plus button here and redo the same thing we just did. So lift the cover, take this out, put the next page, scan it, and all your scans will appear one after another here and they'll be combined at the end. 
then press next give this file a new name and then location is where you want this scan to be saved on your phone so press on this and select the folder on your phone where you want this to go you can also create a new folder if you want to have a specific folder just for your scan like this then i'll click use this folder allow and press save you'll get this confirmation message saying that the file has been saved. Press yes, and we're back on the home screen. Finally, one thing that you may have to use um, while owning this printer is print head cleaning. Uh, if your print heads get clogged, which means that you're gonna see some white lines on your pictures or even on some text, this simply means that your print head are getting clogged it means that you're not using your printer enough sometimes after only a week or two weeks you're gonna see those lines appearing you simply need need to go under print head cleaning here and click yes just be aware that doing this often is not great because it will use every time it perform a print head cleaning it uses um, a small amount of ink so if you're doing this often, it can accumulate and you're going to waste a lot of ink doing that. So make sure you print often. This way you don't have to clean your print heads. And finally, the last thing I want to show you is you see there is an image of your printer on top. You can click on it and have access to different features that are not used very often. But it's good to know that you have access to them from here. So this is it. I hope this video was helpful. If you want to support my channel, check the Amazon affiliate links in the description down below to get some new ink for your printer or maybe some paper as well. Leave a like, subscribe, comment down below and I'll see you in the next video.